welcome you to, to tonight's inaugural uh, induction of the MCHS Hall of Fame members. We've been anxiously awaiting this uh, for about over a year and preparing for today's induction and, uh, and there's been a number of people that are involved in making this hopefully a, a nice evening for everybody. So we're really happy that you could attend and uh, to help us honor and recognize some of MCHS's best. Last February, our Board of Education approved the formation of the uh, Marengo Community High School District 154 Hall of Fame as a way to recognize the accomplishments and contributions of MCHS students, graduates, staff, and community members. At that time, the board also approved a very specific nomination and selection process that's been used for the Hall of Fame. And individuals or teams can be nominated in any one of the following categories, service, personal achievement, extracurricular achievement, commitment, friend of Marengo, and teamwork. So nominees can be submitted by anyone in the community, any relatives, any former staff, any former students. We encourage uh, any of you here this evening that you'd like to nominate someone to uh, do that in the future. We, are, we will always submit uh, nominations for future consideration. And there's information in the program today on uh, the second page, I believe, at the bottom about uh, submitting nominations. You can email us at uh, Hall of Fame at mchs154.org and we'll send you nominations form or all the documents are also on our website. Uh, under the document tab, there's all the nomination forms are there. So at this time, I'd like to recognize the members of our board who were able to be here this evening. On behalf of all of us, I want to thank them uh, for, their, for starting the Hall of Fame and supporting tonight's dinner and program. And I also want to thank them for their volunteer service to our community as a school board member. In these difficult times, it's, it's a very important and many times thankless job to be a school board member. As I introduce each board member, I'd ask them to please stand to be recognized and I'd appreciate it if you just hold your applause until I've read all of their names. Our board president, Elizabeth Henning, board secretary, Linda Dumovich, board member, Richard Fisher, uh, board member Jerry Darlington, and I know board member Todd Bopening will be joining us in a little bit. So thank you uh, for sponsoring this organi event. <laughs> Mrs. Henning will be representing the board, presenting each inductee with a large plaque from the board, and additionally the small plaques you saw on the table when you came in, those will be displayed in a permanent trophy case that we be built this summer in our cafeteria where we will display all of the uh, Hall of Fame inductees from now into the future. The first step to get this Hall of Fame started was to form a uh, Hall of Fame committee which consisted according to the bylaws of 10 members. I can tell you that the com committee members took their task very seriously and put in a lot of time gathering and evaluating nominations prior to casting their votes. I think at the same time I could say we all had a lot of fun doing that. It was really fun uh, digging into the history of Marengo and learning more about the many accomplishments of individuals and teams that have come from this school. So on behalf of the district and the community, I want to recognize and thank each of the committee members. And I'll ask them to please stand as well and be recognized and to please hold your applause until I've read their, all their names. Uh, first, our principal, Mr. Scott Shepard. Our board president, Elizabeth Henning. Our athletic director, Chad Olson, who can't be here because he's at an athletic event. <laughs> uh, we have two current MCHS staff members, uh, Mr. Bob Pamakala, who is an art instructor, and Ms. Becky Chair, who is a family consumer science teacher. Four at-large community members are also on the committee, Chico Alvarez, Roger Cannon, Mary Noe, Rod Poppy, and as the superintendent, I'm also on that committee. So I want to thank all of the committee members for their hard work in putting this together. And finally, there are a number of uh, individuals I want to thank for making this evening's program possible. Everything from Dave Engelbrecht, one of our administrators who built the stage I'm standing on, because we didn't have a small portable stage. 
to uh, Kim Johnson, our cafeteria manager, who did the beautiful table decorations. She always does an amazing job and put a lot of time and thought into having those put together for you. Uh, Dan Kane, our technology assistant, and uh, Kim also put together the picture montage for the uh, placemats. Matt Lynch, our head football coach, up front here, uh, he's copied a DVD that Hank Hemmingson gave us of actual film footage of the 1942 football team uh, that was playing on the TV out front, and we'll have DVDs for everybody who wants them on your way out. You can take a DVD of the 42 football team. It's actually amazing footage. It's got pictures of the coach talking practices, actual game footage, as well as footage from the, some of the reunions that they've had over the years. Uh, Susan McGuire, my assistant, uh, for helping put the program together, the scrapbook you saw up front, the correspondence, and many other things behind the scenes. Uh, she did an awesome job. And uh, Caitlin, I forget, I can't pronounce her last name very well, but she will be playing the piano for us during dinner. She's down there at the end. Danny O. Young is one of our English teachers. She wrote the bios for the program. Uh, and Mrs. Zebart, our culinary arts teacher, and her students have prepared uh, the meal for this evening, and then they'll be serving us after the awards program. So there's been a lot of people involved in pulling this together. Um, at this time, we will begin the induction ceremony with uh, some opening remarks by our principal, Mr. Scott Shepard. Scott? Thank you, and uh, I just want to acknowledge Dr. Bertrand. This was really kind of his, uh, his thought process uh, probably a year and a half, maybe even two, two and a half years ago when we started talking about the need for really recognizing the greatness of Marengo. And uh, Dr. Bertrand uh, really pursued this idea. The board jumped right on with us, and, and this is really an exciting evening to see this all come together. I want to welcome you to our building. I believe this building's about eight years old. Uh, Jerry Trickett, uh, former superintendent here, a longtime uh, educator here in this community, was instrumental in, in uh, helping build this building. And, and what an awesome facility we have. What a, a great job our staff and students have done of decorating this area and really making this into a fine area. Uh, come uh, Tuesday morning here, there will be uh, about 800 kids, kids running up and down these hallways and, and doing the things that they do. And we're very blessed to have this facility, so welcome to our school. Uh, as Dr. Bertrand said, I'm Scott Shepard. I'm the principal here at Marengo Community High School. Today we come together to honor several individuals and a team that have and continue to accomplish great things. Every day I have the privilege to work with a great staff that focuses on helping students pursue opportunities that will help them be successful in life. My wife and I have four children. We moved here about four years ago. And we just absolutely love being a part of this community of Marengo. Uh, tonight, this is a pretty formal event, and I was, as I was getting dressed, I thought, you know, do I wear my suit tonight, or, you know, exactly what do I wear? And I looked at uh, my pullover and had the Marengo right across the front. We talk to our kids a lot here in school about the pride of Marengo and about representing our school, and I just felt it was appropriate to put Marengo right across my chest because I'm very proud to be a part of this. And when we see the success of these individuals here tonight. It's absolutely awesome to start digging into the history and start looking at some of the successes that have come through here. And uh, although we're honoring seven tonight, uh, or six uh, individuals plus a, a team, we know that there are many, many, many success stories out there. Some small successes, some large successes, and we're excited to celebrate those. Uh, the awesome thing about this inaugural class is that we don't just honor sports figures. When this committee was formed, we all agreed and insisted that we honor a variety of individuals and teams that represent the total community of MCHS. This class truly represents what is great about Marengo. Hard work, discipline, commitment, and sacrifice are just a few adjectives that describe the qualities of this community and this group of individuals. Service, commitment, friend, teamwork, personal achievement, and extracurricular. Great titles for our six categories. Today we honor two teachers and coaches that dedicated their lives to working with kids. A basketball player that played on a national championship collegiate team and an artist that is drawn for DreamWorks and illustrated for nationally known books. 
a lifelong Marengo resident that started the MCHS Booster Club and made sure that our kids would always have opportunities in extracurricular activities. A professional baseball player that was a member of the last Cubs World Series Championship, which may not seem like much, but when you consider 1908 was the last time that happened, it is pretty incredible. And to complete this class is a football team that was perfect, undefeated and untied. And probably more impressive is that many of those individuals went off to war shortly after graduation to fight for our freedoms. Above this stage is the mission statement, MCHS, where, excellent, or where learning is valued and excellence is the standard. You see, we may have adopted this just three years ago, but I would tell you that each of these individuals and teams have lived this mission statement. Although they were part of MCHS at different times and have followed different career and life paths, the fact remains that they were Marengo Indians at heart and all understand the need for education and commitment to excellence. As we listen to these stories today, we understand that MCHS and the community of Marengo have touched many lives and are making a difference throughout the world. Our responsibility as educators is great, and we take that challenge and understand that every student that walks through these doors has great potential, and we want to nurture and support that young man or young woman and help them achieve their goals. Please enjoy the night tonight, and then we are honored to have you here as our guest. Congratulations, first class of the Marengo High School Hall of Fame. Next, I have the honor and privilege to introduce Rod Poppy, who was elected president of our Hall of Fame committee. And it's, had, it's been a tremendous resource for our group, and he will make a few comments on behalf of the commi committee and then introduce our first inductee. Coach Poppy, come on up. I would just like to welcome everyone here tonight. It's a wonderful sight to look out there over this group of people and recognize so many of our friends, not only my friends, but friends of Marengo High School. I'd like to congratulate the inductees in this initial class of the Hall of Fame of Marengo High School. I'd like to thank all those people who submitted nominations, and I would like to encourage, in years to come, future nominations. So please do, submit those people that you think are worthy. A job well done to our selection committee. They are limited by the bylaws. Uh, only so many can be uh, chosen in any one year, and uh, it takes a certain number of votes to get those people in. Our committee did a great job. Thank you very, very much. And I'd like to commend the Board of Education as well. They have chosen not only to spotlight the achievements of the past, but I think that this committee or this Hall of Fame uh, will also uh, uh, help to uh, be an incentive for future people. I can imagine people right now at Marengo High School saying, Rod and Chico, a couple of pretty ordinary guys from Union, if they can get into this Hall of Fame, why can't I? <laughs> In a moment, I'm going to ask Liz Henning to come up and help with the awards, but right now I want to make some comments on the football team of 1942. And Dan said it would be well if we had someone up here to recognize that team who can even remember 1942. And, of course, I raised my hand. I said, I can. I was... 10 years old, and 1942 were not the happiest of times. Uh, World War II was going on. There was very little good news from Europe and probably even less from the South Pacific. The community uh, was living but, but under rationing. Everything from sugar to gasoline was being rationed. So the Marengo community, like all communities throughout this country, needed something to cheer them up a little bit, something to give them a little bit of hope for the future. And along came the 1942 football team. What do I remember about them? 
As I said, I was 10 years old. Friends of the family invited me to come to the Marengo High School football field and watch them play Belvedere. Now, Belvedere was a bigger school, and there was a pretty intense rivalry, and it wasn't always a friendly rivalry. And I'd say probably the community was about evenly split. Some thought that the 42 team was good enough to beat Belvedere, and others didn't. I had never seen a football game in my life, but I came to the field and I was so impressed with the size of the people, the power of those players, the speed of those players, and the teamwork that they distributed. Obviously, they went undefeated. As I came here later as a teacher and a coach, I always felt that the 1942 team was a standard a standard that you tried real hard to live up to. Finally, in 1958, we had an undefeated team. We were big, we were fast, we were pretty aggressive. One of my friends over in Union said to me, is it really true, coach, that you shut out seven of the nine opponents on your schedule? And I said, yes, we did. He said, too bad about that tie that 1942 team didn't have any ties. <laughs> Five years later, the 1963 team did go undefeated. And I met another person that I had known for a long time here from Marengo. And he said, you went all the way, coach. Congratulations. I said, thank you very much. He said, uh, I heard you weren't very big. I said, no, sir, we didn't have a single player that even weighed 200 pounds. He said, you must have used a lot of finesse. And I said, we did, but we also blocked and tackled pretty well. And he thought about that for a moment, and he said, you must have had some sons on your team from the 42 team. <laughs> Liz, would you mind joining me up here at the podium right now? <laughs> We'll introduce some of the family members of that 42 team. First of all, Hank Hemmingson, team member. Ken Hansing, son of Robert Hansing. <laughs> Tammy Hansing, daughter of Don Hemmingson. Deb Hansing, daughter-in-law of Robert Hansing. <laughs> Deb Klimmer, daughter of Roland Penny. Nancy Jamrachek, daughter of Jess Ratfield. <laughs> Ann
Ed Zink, son of Ed Zink. Dick Gustafson, son of Wayne Gustafson. <laughs> Alice Nolly, wife of Henry Nolly. Sarah Foster, daughter of Wallace Albright, and Delora Skinner, sister of Wallace Albright. <laughs> and there you have it, an outstanding team and the first inductee ever into the Marengo Hall of Fame. I just happened to be at school at the right time when they had a championship team. I was a sub on there, and I got enough quarters in to get a major letter and uh, it was great to play with those fellas. Uh, the movie you see back there of the backfield shifting. They all took three steps and got in a different place and uh, the offense, the defense didn't know where the ball was going to go because Perk Penny was so tricky with the ball you didn't know whether he was going to hand it off to Palno or Mackey or block up the middle or throw a pass to the two ends. And he was very good for hiding the ball. And they were a great team, good to play with them. And glad I could get a major letter out of them. And after we got out of school, we got together every Christmas and played cards. We played cards with Ed Zink's Braille cards. And <laughs> We had a great time. We've been together, a lot of us fellas. A lot of them are gone, so I wish they were here. Thank you. It is a great honor to recognize a fellow Unionite as the first friend of Marengo Community High School, Alex Chico Alvarez. <laughs> Chico has worn many hats and has been a very familiar face in the Marengo Union area since he graduated MCHS in 1956. You may remember him as part of the Marengo Post Office or Union School Board. I knew him as the go-to person for the Union Lions Club scholarships. Chico has been involved with lots of firsts in his lifetime. He was on the first board of the Marengo Area Schools Education Foundation, original board of the Summer with the Arts program, 
first board to form the Marengo Union Rescue Squad. But what sets Chico apart this afternoon is his founding of the Marengo Boosters Club. As president for 25 years, Chico saw the needs and worked tirelessly to serve MCHS. To start and preside over an organization for that long is a monumental task. A true friend is always there to help. And Chico proved over and over that he was ready to help. It is with gratitude for your 40 years of being a true friend that we induct you, Alex Chico Alvarez, in the inaugural Marengo Community High School Hall of Fame. From the bottom of our hearts, we say, thank you, Chico. Say a few words here. Uh, this award, uh, this award isn't for one person. We had a lot of people involved in whatever organization I was with. It took a lot, of, a lot of awful lot of young people. You know, love to thank my wife. She had to eat a lot of hot dogs and popcorn <laughs> as we trudged through the whole season. You know, either football, basketball, whatever. Uh, I like to. Thank uh, Roger Cannon for nominating me. Um, I'm sure he could have looked around and found probably a better candidate, but I thank him anyway. Um, I'd like to thank very much so, uh, besides a part of the administration, Mr. Jerry Trickett. Uh, between Donna and I, uh, we added some of that gray hair that he's got on his head. You know, we, we, we'd come up with a lot of ideas, and unbeknownst to us, they weren't always kosher, you know, but uh, <laughs> he, uh, he, deal, he dealt with good, good with us. So, uh, and also, too, I'd be remiss if my right-hand person would please stand up and take a little bow because you earned a girl, Donna Fisher, would you please stand up? <laughs> and thank you again for the committee for selecting me, and it's been a great honor. Thank you. I'm Roger Cannon, and I'm here to induct Homer Bill Berry into the Marengo High School Hall of Fame. I worked with Bill for 27 years helping him coach basketball, and he kind of guided my career also. I, a big thanks to him. During his time at Marengo, 29 years, he was 573 wins with 211 losses. Uh, his, his achievements were unheard of almost legendary in the state of Illinois for basketball. He had 13 Class A regional championships in a 15-year span, and uh, his teams won 20 or more games 14 times and 17 Class A regionals, five sectional championships, and one super sectional championship in 1990. Coach Berry started his career in Bethany, Illinois, and he kind of worked his way up Route 47 to Forest Strong Wing, then to Huntley, and then we got him here at Marengo. And his first season at Marengo was a losing season, and then after that, he only had one more losing season. Uh, he ended his career with 718 wins, 345 losses. When he retired from coaching basketball, he was 10th on the all-time list in the state of Illinois for wins. Uh, he's been IBCA Coach of the Year. He's been Northwest Herald Coach of the Year. He is in the Illinois State Basketball Hall of Fame. And I don't think, and one other thing he did here that 
maybe goes unnoticed is he was dean of students here for a few years toward the end of his career, and he did a wonderful, a great job, and I think Mr. Trickett can uh, abide by that. He was one of the outstanding deans we've had at, at Marengo High School. So he was all around, good teacher, dean of students, and basketball coach. And I'd like Bill Berry Jr. to, to step up here. Well, um, on behalf of my dad and my entire family, I'd like to thank the committee, uh, the staff and administration of Murillo Community High School, as well as the Board of Education. Wherever my dad is tonight, I know he's very proud. Thank you. The next inductee would be Elmer Binky. He played basketball here in the 45, 46, and I believe from that year he went uh, 24 and 6 here and became champions of the North Six Conference. The following season, 46, 47, they were 26 and 4 and rose to become the champions of the New Swanee Conference. That's the first time, also, that was the first time that they have won the McHenry County t Basketball Tournament. And after graduating from Marengo High School, he went on to Bradley, where a very unusual mix came about. They uh, played in the NIT, which at that time, for us, was the NCAA that it is now. That was the big tournament. And they played uh, the City College of New York, and they did lose to that uh, team. Then they ended up playing in the same year, they played NCAA and ended up playing the same team and again lost. But at that time, Bradley was a powerhouse, a number one or two team in the nation. And we had, that's the kind of team that Elmer Binky was playing on at the time. Uh, after he uh, got out of College, he was drafted by the Rochester Royals, okay, and then he was traded to Milwaukee. So he had a short career in the professional league. Uh, I'd like to name some of the names that was on his high school team because I'm sure some of you do know him. Harris Penny, Elmer Rudy, Herb Simpson, Lyle Miller, Ed Carney, Roy Fitzsimmons, Gene Anthony, Bob Schultz, and Macy Holliday. That's some of the people from Marengo that was on that team. I got a chance, it's so exciting when you work on a committee like this, because I got to call Elmer, and he lives in Hoover, Alabama, and unfortunately he, he wasn't in, in the kind of condition to come to the tournament, or the meeting today, but he's the kind of person, if I had a chance, I'd drive down there and spend about three hours talking to him. He, he just kind of basketball crazy, you know? Just a person you just sit in the back porch and talk to him. Um, so unfortunately, he is not here today, and his son-in-law was unable to attend. So we will make his plaque. I'll take it here if anybody wants to take a picture of it. Okay. Elmer Binky, Marengo. As a member of the MCHS community, it's been a pleasure and a humbling experience to serve on this committee. We are blessed to be rich in the bounty of honorable men and women. It is a pleasure to introduce Scott Gustin as a newly elected member of the MCHS Hall of Fame. 
As the committee discussed different categories for the Hall of Fame, Scott Gustafson became a clear recipient for the Personal Achievement Award. Scott has prospered in a highly competitive field of fine arts. After graduating from Marengo Community High School in 1975, he attended the Chicago Academy of Fine Arts and majored in animation. While studying, he remained galvanized by the detail, color, and vibrancy of illustrators like Wyeth, Arthur Rackman, and Norman Rockwell. After leaving art school, Gustafson became, began considering illustration as a career. As an illustrator, his classic, opulent approach gained immediate response and soon was commissioned to create works for the Saturday Evening Post, DreamWorks, and the uh, Greenwich Workshop, among others. He created more than a dozen paintings based on fairy tales and nursery rhymes, illustrated a number of classic children's books, and was awarded the Chelsea Award for the best book illustrations from the Association of Science Fiction and Fantasy Arts for his work in classic fairy tales. In 2007, he won a silver award in the category of best children's picture books from the independent publisher book awards for his illustrations in the book Favorite Nursery Rhymes for Mother Goose. Scott is a, also a published writer, having written and illustrated his first novel, Eddie, The Lost Youth of Alan Poe. We as a committee are honored to have Scott Gustafson as an inaugural member of the MCHS Hall of Fame. Thank you, Dr. Bertrand, thank you, Bob, and uh, uh, the selection committee for choosing to honor me alongside these other inductees, all of whom have given so much back to their community. <clears throat> I feel very fortunate to have grown up in Marengo, even though I haven't lived here for over 30 years, it will always be my hometown. Ever since I was young, the people here have given me the kindness of being interested in my work. This honor represents just one more gift the people of Marengo have given me, and I am very appreciative. I would also like to thank the members of my family who are here this evening and who have throughout the years been very supportive. My mom, Dorothy, my brother, Kirk, and his wife, Donna. It's also a very happy coincidence that my Uncle Wayne was part of the 1942 uh, winning team, and his son, as you know now, we are related. <laughs> except for his dad and his wife, Carol, here as well. Um, when I got over the surprise of being selected uh, for this honor, I emailed Mrs. McGuire, she's McGuire, uh, doctor's assistant, and uh, asked if the inductees were expected to say anything or have any remarks. And her reply was, uh, yeah, three or four minutes, three or five minutes, and I thought, three to five minutes, how am I going to do that? <laughs> so I started thinking back to my high school days and uh, my high school speech class, as a matter of fact. And I thought, you know what? I've got to do what, what I was taught. I've got to be prepared. So as I said, I've got the cards and everything. <laughs> uh, I think Mrs. Bonzo, our, our teacher, would be gratified to know that I took those lessons to heart. Um, Anyway, I better give to the right card. <laughs> Not quite as well prepared as I thought. It's ironic, I, after I got started thinking about this, that uh, it's been 40 years now, 40 years later, and I'm relying on a class that I would have avoided taking if I possible. And that I'm putting those lessons to use in accepting this honor from the same high school that I took those classes at. Maybe that's what, and uh, the more I thought about it, I thought maybe that's what a good education does. It uh, prepares you not only for the expected, but the unexpected as well. I think that my MCHS education did just that. It served a good foundation and offered a range of classes and experiences, even though we students weren't always appreciative of it at the time. When I started high school, I had a narrow, a fairly narrow range of interests 
and thought I knew all I needed to know about everything else. I wanted to be an animator and make cartoons. I was so sure of that that everything else didn't seem very important and a waste of time. So when I started as a freshman, I was very anxious to take art classes. I heard a lot about Mrs. Schaefer's art classes and that they were very good. Uh, my brother had taken some classes. I knew other students who enjoyed it. So I was really looking forward to that. And I thought, well, this is going to be a chance to start really learning about what it is I want to do. Um, but the first day we had uh, of art class, <clears throat> Mrs. Schaefer did something interesting after introducing herself and the ideas of the class and stuff. She handed out pieces of paper to everybody and said, I'd like, to just, I'd like you to just take a pencil and do a drawing. Anything you want, just do a drawing. So we spent 15 or 20 minutes and did the drawings, and then she collected them, and that was the end of that. She never mentioned those drawings again, and, and didn't tell us why we had done them. We were wondering, well, is this, are we going to be graded on this? Is she going to evaluate us in some way? But anyway, so then soon, the, you know, we got into the class itself, and I found out why it was such a good class. She, she had uh, this closet that was full of all these art materials, and they were all free. That was probably the last time in my life that uh, I ever got free art materials. But that first year, it consisted of her assignments being, say that she'd start with pen and ink, and she'd say, okay, I'd like you to do a pen and ink drawing, and she'd maybe give us a demonstration or show us some examples. And then it was up to us to figure out how to use the medium and had come up with creative uh, solutions to the problems. So there was actually, even though there was a strong structure, there was a lot of creative freedom. Um, so throughout the year we did pencil drawings and pen and ink, charcoal, pastel, oil pastel, watercolor, tempera. And uh, the great thing was that it kind of pushed us, it forced us out of our comfort zones. You know, we thought, you might feel like, hey, I, I kind of like this pen and ink, I'd like to do more of that. But by the time you got done with that one, it was time to do something else. So she had us kind of continually moving and we didn't become experts in any one thing, but we did try just about all there was to try. So at the end, it was interesting because at the end of the year then, I don't know if she kept all these drawings and these projects throughout the year, but she brought them all out and we had them sitting on our desk and it was a pretty big stack. It was pretty impressive. And it was kind of neat to just realize that you'd done all that work. And once that kind of set in and you thought, oh yeah, I remember doing that pen and drawing or that watercolor, at that point, she handed back those drawings that we'd done the very first day of class. And that was really eye-opening. They looked kind of childlike, crude, compared to the things that we just finished, you know, at the end of the semester. And that was a really um, eye-opening lesson for me. First of all, I think it taught that uh, you don't always know as much as you think you know. <laughs> and that there's always room for improvement. And that here was a good example of what time and practice can achieve. So those were two surprise lessons that I got out of that class. Um, and our class was great. I really enjoyed it and I was looking forward to that. But there were a lot of other classes in my high school, to my high school mind, that were never going to be of any use to me. <laughs> Math was one of those classes. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't geared towards math, but I took as little as possible. And I ended up, I took geometry, or I took algebra and geometry, and geometry was my last class in math. And as I sat there, you know, we'd have to prove theorems and things like that. I think, I'm never going to use this. But as it turned out, there were a lot of the things, the terms that we used, that I ended up using almost all the time. Horizon line, perpendicular planes, parallel lines, 30, 45, 90 degree angles. And there was a term tangent means, you know, when a line uh, comes up, up to like a circle or, or a, a, a triangle, uh, it just touches it, it just comes up against it. That's something we talk about a lot when we're designing pictures. So we don't want tangents, you want things either in front of or in back of things, but you don't want them just kind of put together. That's not good design. And Mr. Moore, who was our teacher, it's funny, just last week, I was using some of Mr. Moore's uh, instructions or remembering how to use them when I was doing a, a drawing, a, a, a perspective drawing where I was, by, what do you call it, bisecting uh, angles using a compass. So the stuff is still up to date today <coughs> for guys like me who still work on a drawing board. 
But uh, I also had a printing class, which with Mr. Nisey, which to tell you the truth, I thought, well, this is going to be an easy grade because printing wasn't exactly, the printing class wasn't exactly known as being a rigorous academic uh, class. It was more of a vocational thing. And I took it because I thought, well, you know, I'll probably pick up a few things and maybe I'll be able to run off some samples or something like that. But second to my art class, I think this class was where I learned the most that I was able to use later in my career. Because in the end, I didn't become the animator that I thought I was going to become. I became an illustrator. And in illustration, you have to work in the printed media. And uh, so we had learned terms back when I was uh, in printing class, like line shot, half tone, continuous tone, non-photo blue, dot patterns, dots per square inch, cyan, magenta, yellow, uh, all that stuff ended up being very, very useful when I actually got out in the field. There are probably hundreds of other examples of, examples of high school classes that uh, later proved to be practical. But there's one lesson from high school that had a different effect on me. Uh, I was in a freshman year in uh, English class. I was taught by Mr. Bruce. And we were studying Romeo and Juliet, you know, West Side Story, that thing. Poetry, plays, short stories, and mythology. Uh, one day, we were studying the tales of uh, Odysseus, or Poseidon, or Minerva, or whatever. And uh, a kid who was even lazier than I <laughs> asked, Mr. Reed, why do we have to learn all this stuff about ancient Greece? And Mr. Reed said, most of you in this class probably aren't going to be English teachers or Greek scholars. But if someday in your future you're at a cocktail party and someone turns to you and says, who was that guy in mythology who had to spend eternity push pushing a boulder up a mountain? And you can answer, Sisyphus, then I will have, I will have accomplished my mission. <laughs> in other words, you may not appreciate it now, but you're, what you're learning today is enriching your life in ways that you will only realize as you live your lives. That was certainly proven to be true in my life. So now, finally, after 40 years, I can at last say to Mrs. Bonzo and all my other MCHS instructors, wherever they are, you are right. You do have to be prepared. I thank them, and I thank you for this great honor.
His family lived on a farm in Marengo until 1900, and I think at uh, that time they moved into town, and, was, and those of you who know it, Doc Alice's house, Alice and Doc Jim's house is where they lived after that. Lundgren's successful athletic career and exemplary sportsmanship and leadership continue to honor his hometown community. The athletic fields at Zion Lutheran are marked with an honorary sign on the east side commemorating his outstanding accomplishments as a student, athlete, and coach. So I wish there were some family members here to represent him, but I think we live too far away. Good afternoon. I am honored to be a part of the Hall of Fame Committee and pleased to be able to introduce Rod Poppy. I taught with Rod for 15 years, 1979 to 1994. I also am a coach and worked with Rod when he was the athletic director, and also he's a friend of mine. Rod is a 1950 graduate of Marengo Community High School. He earned letters in football, baseball, track, and basketball. He attended Valparaiso University, where he continued his excellence in athletics, lettering in baseball and football. He served as team captain of the football team and won MVP honors in 1954. In 1955, graduated with his BS with high honors. After spending two years in the Army, Rod came back to MCHS in 1957. His teaching duties included PE, driver's education, history, geography, and government. Athletics has always been a part of Rod's life, and that was seen here at MCHS. He served 23 years as head football coach and led the Indians to seven undefeated seasons, including losing only six games from 1965 to 1973. Additionally, he was a sophomore basketball coach for 13 years and head baseball coach for eight. During his time at MCHS, he also served 25 years as athletic director. Rod is a part of the Illinois Athletic Directors Hall of Fame and the Valparaiso University Hall of Fame. He was granted the Valparaiso University Alumni Achievement Award in 1984 and established the Valparaiso University Scholarship Fund that same year. The MCH athletic fields, which are right outside those doors, were named after Rod in 1993. Rod was nominated in the category of commitment. Rod Poppy has demonstrated commitment to the highest degree serving Marengo Community High School for 37 years in the classroom the administration office, to the football field, the baseball diamond, and the gym. I am again honored to present Rod Poppy.
to the superintendents of Marengo High School. Four of them, all together. They encouraged me, probably more important than corrected me, but they mentored me throughout all those years. I'd like to mention a time when my life really changed course. I was an incoming senior. I had all of my high school requirements done. I was in the upper half of my class. I had chosen some courses during my senior year that required little or no homework. I called them enrichment classes. But that was a lot of baloney. I came into the office to sign up for my senior year, and we had a brand new superintendent here. I had never met him before. I had no idea that he even knew who I was. But after looking at my schedule of music appreciation, woodshop, personal typing, and a social studies class that I had carefully preserved for my senior year because I love social studies, he said, Ron, is there any chance you'll be going to college? And I said, oh, I don't think so, Mr. Nichols. My parents could never afford to send me to college. He said, what about an athletic scholarship? And I said, I've never really thought about that before. And then he uttered three words that was going to change my life. He said, let's be prepared. Let's be prepared. Let us be prepared. I didn't know how he was going to become involved. They said, the first thing you need to do is take another year of English. Well, that meant a semester of speech and a semester of journalism. I figured I could handle that, so I said, okay. Thinking that would be the end of it. Next he said, you need another year of math. And I said, oh, no. I've never been very good at math, but we had a good math teacher named Paul Swafford. He was also our class advisor, and I knew that he wouldn't let me sink. I knew he'd get extra help for me if I had to have it. So I said, okay, expecting that was it. Next he said, you're going to need another year of science. That was physics. That involved a lot of algebra. I at least knew that much. And that's where I dug in my heels. I said, Mr. Nichols, my father insists that I take a year of typing. He says it's going to be good for my future. And Mr. Nichols said, I can see your father is a wise man. Typing it will be as your fifth subject. <laughs> But I guess my, my competitive instincts sort of kicked in at that time, and uh, I did what he asked me to do. But where's the two-way street? Where's the reciprocity here? Where did he come in? Seven years later, without an application, without an interview, from a thousand miles away, he hired me to coach football basketball, and baseball. That's where the real commitment came in. He committed himself to me. I think he was taking a big risk, but everything worked out just fine. So <laughs> thank you, Mr. Nichols, and thank you for this induction into the Ringo High School Hall of Fame.
Thank you.